Solid state drives or SSDs have been around for quite a while now. They're pretty much essential. Wow, that is a very first world word for that. In fact, every workstation in this studio and every test bench we build these days uses SSDs. They're fast, they've gotten amazingly affordable, they're small, they're fast, um, they're fast. Uh, they fit in any spare space inside a case. Did we mention that they're fast? But there comes a time when fast isn't fast enough, and we need faster. Say hello to my little friend. These are the Intel 750 series SSDs, the first available with NVMe, the full name for which is Non-Volatile Memory Host Controller Interface. But you can think of it like a newer version of AHCI that is specifically designed with the lightning fast speeds of SSDs and the high bandwidth of PCI Express lanes in mind. So how much bandwidth, do you ask? Well, these drives use a four lane generation three PCI Express slot with up to 32 gigabits per second of available throughput. The SATA 3's 6 gigabit per second suddenly pales in comparison, doesn't it? Now, as you'll notice, we actually have two different kinds with us here today. The first one is actually in the shape mostly of a regular 2.5 inch drive, but the connector Oh, that baby is anything but regular. It uses an SFF8639 connector, which is a type of SAS connector normally reserved for enterprise level applications. Yes, this drive completely bypasses SATA Express because even that format wasn't fast enough for it. To use this drive, you'll need the included mini SAS like weirdo adapter cable and a SUS hyper kit and an M.2 slot on your motherboard, which interfaces directly with the PCI Express controller that is going to be on your CPU. And yes, it specifically has to be an ASUS HyperKit because there is literally no other cable or adapter on the market right now that a consumer can get, at least at the time of filming. Now, we got our hands on one, but it happens to be DOA. Um, so Anthony quickly ditched this setup because he felt, and I think it's a great point, that there were too many points of potential failure with a setup like that. Fortunately, Intel also designed a peer normal PCI Express slot version that simply drops into your motherboard. The only downside here is that you won't be able to run quad graphics cards anymore, but it beats having to deal with this kind of messy and inconvenient alternative that is a two and a half inch drive, but like it's thicker, so it doesn't fit in a lot of two and a half inch slots. You're locked into this exact cable. Um, so yeah, the sleek and aluminum heatsink is just the icing on the cake. And the only thing missing from this is like a black PCB and like a black PCI slot cover or something. Ugh, looks so good. Both of these drives come in the same capacities and offer the same performance per capacity. You can get them in either 400 gig or 1.2 terabyte versions. Yes, 1.2 terabyte. And with the 400 gig version, you can expect up to 2200 megabytes per second reads, 900 megabytes per second writes, 430,000 read IOPS, and 230,000 write IOPS. With the bigger 1.2 terabyte version that we we have here performing ever so slightly better across the board. So uh, there's a placeholder for inserting some Intel benchmark images. So blah, blah, blah. We're seriously not making these numbers up. Anthony ran a few benchmarks to confirm, but you can actually click here to check out an OnText very detailed and thorough review that goes into way more depth than we have time for in a typical video format. If you need a TLDR though, you can summarize it with low latency, high speed in every category. And Anthony needed to copy a few games from one test drive to another. He managed to copy an entire installation of GTA 5 in just under two minutes. Wow. He also decided to test it against four HyperX 240 gig regular SATA 3 SSDs just for fun. Even with all four in RAID 0, they were nowhere near the speed of the Intel 750 SSD. We could have gone with eight HyperX drives for the same price as the Intel, but you should honestly never use eight drives in RAID 0. That's just silly. You'd have to be an idiot to do that on your daily driver rig. So in conclusion, the Intel 750 series NVMe SSDs are as amazing and fast as they claim to be. The Samsung SM951 series is just as fast, but it's quite difficult to actually buy one right now, and it only comes in a maximum capacity of 512 gigs, which is, as we all know, just 
less bragging rights than 1.2 terabytes. The high performance does come with a high cost though, over $1,300 Canadian for a 1.2 terabyte version and $500 Canadian for the 400 gigabyte version. But that's the price you pay for NVMe, which is low latency, high speed, and sex appeal. So uh, click right about, let's say here, or the link in the video description if you want to uh, have one of these for yourself and you're ready to pony up. Now, normally at this point in the video, we'd ask you guys a question like, would you buy this SSD? But we know that most people, most people probably wouldn't. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna gently stroke the SSD and we're gonna go with a more reasonable question that more people will answer yes to. Like, you know, would you be willing to like this video with the button below? to see more of me stroking things on camera. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this from NCIX. They probably won't have as much stroking, but you should subscribe anyway, just in case it's there. Yeah. Is this a static concern?